Hi, I'm Shane Tubbs. I'm the Chief Scientific Officer at the Seattle Science Foundation, and it's my pleasure to introduce to you uh, Dr. Uh, Rick uh, Hines. He's the president and founder of the um, uh, your institution is the Back Society. The Back Center. Back Center. Sorry, excuse me. And that's in Melbourne, Florida. It's in Melbourne, Florida. Melbourne, yes. Florida. And, Not uh, Melbourne, Australia. No, Melbourne, correct. <laughs> and uh, we're happy to have you here today. Uh, um, we're having a lateral spine uh, course um, with some uh, adjustments to the lateral spine approach, uh, some being more oblique, some being anterior. And uh, you've uh, offered your expertise today in both uh, some lectures and some practical uh, presentations to the group that's been uh, very welcome. So thank you again for coming. Oh, thank you. It's been great. It's been a really exciting course. I think I learned a lot too, especially with your first lecture in anatomy. It oh, all starts you. with the anatomy. Oh, that's right. Thank you. I'm biased, but I'll agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about uh, your place, your shop, your clinics back in uh, Melbourne. Well, we're down in, in uh, God's waiting room, so we, everybody's 60 to 90 and the bone's falling apart and a lot of four th five level cases and old people. So we have a lot of need for technology that, that helps these people with, with uh, predictability. Mm. And the oblique approach that, that I, I'm talking about really is just a a variation of traditional uh, anterior surgery of the spine, but it's less invasive. It follows the minimally invasive track, which which is important because that's less uh, blood loss and less operative time for our patients. And we have an army of older patients out there golfing and, and fishing because they're no longer stuck at home and didn't have a big giant major surgery. They had the oblique approach and uh, and uh, doing well with it. But our shop is private practice, and uh, our patients are are people that just don't want to give in. They're going to Florida to, to live and to live long and mm. the spines let them down, their hearts outlive their spine. Mm. And so our go job is to keep the spine going as long as the heart's going. Sure. And it's a trick, it's, a, it's, it's getting harder. They're getting sure. older and older and older and they want more and more and more. Right. But I think courses like this actually help us bring our thoughts together and ideas together and we learn from each other and we'll take it right back to our patients. Right. So I think it's great. Well, that has to be very rewarding. It is, it is. And, I think I, I love the, uh, the, uh, the interaction of the faculty, the interaction of the doctors that come to, to learn, and they bring with them a tremendous amount of insight in what they do. So it's a okay. great exchange for us as well. Sure. How long have you been uh, there in Melbourne? I've been in Melbourne since I left the Army. I spent about 20 years in the Army and traveled everywhere. Then I settled in Melbourne about 1992. Okay. Were you a surgeon in the Army? I was. I okay. was in the infantry. I was a brigade surgeon different type of surgery sure. in the infantry, but uh, I did uh, my orthopedic training there in the military. When did you first decide you wanted to spend the career in uh, spine surgery? Interesting. I was actually going to be a foot and ankle surgeon. I, was, I loved the complexity of calcaneal fractures, but mm -hmm. I did a rotation in neurosurgery my last year under Dr. Foley. Dr. Foley is, uh, at that time, was just Dr. Foley, but he's become the father of minimally invasive surgery. He got into my head. Mm -hmm. about spine mm -hmm. and what he was thinking and I completely converted to uh, wanting to go to do a fellowship and study spine because of Dr. Foley. He didn't know that at the time and I wasn't interested and I just wanted to finish my rotation. Sure. So uh, then to find out uh, 20 years later he developed the, the MIS tubular approach, metrics, mm -hmm. sextant and on and on and on. So yeah, some, like in life you just bump into these things and life has its way of happening to you. Right. So almost by serendipity. It's serendipity. It wow. was. But if I hadn't had that rotation, I'd be a foot and ankle specialist today for sure. Mm, okay. Well, where did you grow up? I was born in Maine. Maine. But you could you could tell that I'm a maniac. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you were going to say that? Weren't you going to say that? I, I, no, 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 not at all. <laughs> yeah, I was born in Maine and um, grew up in New England. And then uh, I got stationed in Hawaii mm. for my residency. And once we were there for six years, it was going to have to be palm trees and sand somewhere. Right. So Melbourne, Florida is mm, pretty good. It's pretty close. Yeah, pretty close. That's right. Where did you go to medical school? Medical school was Rutgers uh, Medical School, and then it converted uh, to Robert Wood Johnson Medical School, and then it converted back to Rutgers. Okay. Based on grants and the such. I see. How many uh, partners do you have in your practice in Melbourne? Uh, we have a group of uh, three spinal surgeons, and then we have a group of four or five uh, pain management physicians. Mm -hmm neurologist and then a, a group of mid-level physicians assistants and nurse practitioners chiropractic um, in our facility and then we have our own operating rooms four operating rooms we have our own uh, MRI CT so basically anything you can think of 
that you need for your spine is, is there. Is there. We can well, provide the service for the patients. Okay. Well, there's been such a huge explosion of minimally invasive spine surgery in the last, you know, decade. Yeah. Um, do you, do you, can you even envision where we're going to be um, 10, 20 years from now? No. I think that we're, we're, we're kind of victims of the rapid change in information and technology. Just, for example, 3D printing. Mm -hmm. The impact of that, just that one technology, is going to revolutionize right. many things, and one of it's going to be medicine. It's mm -hmm. fine. So I, I can't predict anymore. Things are changing so quickly. I think what we learn today um, is going to change tomorrow. But one thing's not going to change: the anatomy. That's right. And so it's this. I, I just think this course is fabulous because you start with anatomy, mm -hmm. and it was and it was great anatomy. I learned so much. I mean, that will always be the foundation. Always be the foundation. And no matter how the technology flows. We're going to go come back to the anatomy for the way in which we're going to implement that technology every sure. time. There's an old saying uh, that uh, the oldest child of mother medicine is anatomy, uh, which I, I think oh, is I love a, that. That's it great. Has a lot of resonance it to it. It does. So, what did you think of the course today? The um, different techniques. Um, I think the course was was excellent. Um, I, I think the, the it was impressed with it, that the doctors stayed in the room. Mm -hmm. Nobody left. No. I've been at courses where by noon, half the room's empty. Right. You kept the full audience the whole day. And then to, after a day of lectures, everyone on a Saturday to head to the lab, and they're still in the lab, mm -hmm. full stations, that's, that tells you the success of your course. That's right. That, right there. That's genuine interest, and, and the doctors are learning. So, And if you're here to teach, it's rewarding because you feel like you're not wasting time. People sure. want to learn, so you, you feel good about coming. Yeah, exactly. Well, what do you do in your spare time? I know you don't uh, operate 24 hours a day. I don't, but I actually close. I don't have anything else <laughs> that I'm really good at, so I, I decided I can't. I can't hit the golf ball very well, mm -hmm. and if I try to fish, there are no fish. So I, I basically practice medicine six days a week. I actually see patients on Saturday all day. Wow. And the rest of the time I spend doing things like this, teaching, and I like to. I like to work on projects, engineering projects that improve my surgery. Sure. So my hobby is my work, my work's my hobby. Mm. And I'm proud of it. I'm not, I'm not, uh, sure. I have no interest in anything else. Sure. Well, I have to say I learned a lot from your lecture this morning and your uh, presentation Thank from you. the lab and I took uh, copious notes. So uh, it'll I'll, raise some questions, right? It, so it, it will, the questions yes. are good and then we'll have a dialogue and we'll yes. debate and we'll get upset and eventually we'll all go the right direction. Right. That'd be nice. I hope uh, in the future we can uh, convince you to come back out for future similar courses that we put on. Yes, but next time it has to be sunny. <laughs> it's always sunny it's in always Seattle. Sunny <laughs> <laughs> What's the population in uh, Melbourne, do you know? Yeah, we're about 300,000 in Melbourne okay. proper, and the, the, the draw area is about 500 to 600,000. Okay. This is, the, we're, you know, Cape Canaveral. I watch the, all the rockets launch from my backyard. Oh, wow. And we have the busiest port. Uh, a cruise port in America. Is really, that right? It's just in our county, yeah, Cape I Canaveral. Think, okay. I, if you'd be surprised if I was there, the uh, the longest running soak, soak, uh, folk song artist lives in Melbourne, mm. Alice's Restaurant, and so Arlo Guthrie lives in Oh, Alabama. you're kidding. Wow. And a famous band that, uh, Come On Baby, Light My Fire. Yeah. The lead singer went to high school in Melbourne. Okay. Uh, the Doors. Jim oh, Morrison. Wow. And there was a genie uh, that came out of a bottle. Now I know she was in Cape Canaveral. Yeah. Cape uh, Patrick Air Force Base, yeah. right there. Yeah. So uh, Melbourne has some interesting, uh, interesting things. That's very interesting. Wow. What about your family? Um, yeah, I have four daughters, uh, or should I say, they have me. Uh, <laughs> right now, I've gotten ten texts today. Did I take my vitamins? Uh, like getting rest? Uh, don't drink too much. That's funny. My kids and. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're all adults, but uh, four kids, and they, they're, they're everywhere. They're spread out. One's in San Francisco, one's in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and one's moving to Atlanta, one's in Melbourne. Wow. Well, I've been great. married to the same woman for, uh, since I was in high school, so God bless her <laughs> for that. <laughs> and uh, they're very stable. Family is the other thing I do. That kind of is my hobby. I sure. should say I have a hobby. If I'm not working, it's something with the family. That's great. That's great. That's great. Well, uh, Rick, thank you very much for joining us today. My pleasure. Um, Thanks, it was Shane. great to meet you. It was and nice to meet you. Hear you really... talk, and I uh, uh, hope we see you soon. Well, thank you. You will, because we're gonna we're gonna do some projects. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs>